And we're live. I think we can start talking now. Hi, folks. Hi. We are standing here with a very, very uh, tall person. Very tall person. You must be I'm Dutch. Pretty. You must pretty. be Dutch, well, right? Pretty. Okay. <laughs> pretty That's tall. Yes. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? We are, we are good, actually. The yeah. Alma Netherlands, the biggest conference in the Netherlands so far. So far, it is definitely. No sessions. Any, any sessions today that you uh, want to be given? Yep, I did one yesterday. I know few on the Max Talenti platform, and today I'm gonna try to do some kind of best practice session on the identity as well. Yeah, yeah, nice. some some typical things we have seen people uh, struggling with. So I got a hundred slides. A hundred slides. You only and got a, forty-five a, minutes. A few demos, and uh, try to get through those. Yeah, we'll see. So that's the ASP that we have Wow. Oh, okay, sorry. Sorry, I will just speak like this. Oh, so such a no. bunch of amateurs here. Yeah, yeah, uh, amateurs. Uh, no, no, this one is on. Yeah, this one is on. Your was off. Yeah, it's, I it's think. Be on now. Is it on now? Is it yeah, on now? It yeah, on apparently now. it's on now. Yeah, this yeah. is like raw footage, you know? So, ASP.NET identity, that's uh, or, or, or not? Well, ASP.NET is some of the middleware which supports our identity platforms. I think at uh, Azure Active Directory or Azure Active Directory B2C. Okay, so. Yeah. Nice. So, you made quite a shift because I know you're still from the Windows Phone days. Oh, oh yeah. I have to bring it up. Right? Yeah, I definitely have. Good old times. Good old right? times. But oh, it's so much fun. You, you, you did a lot of new jobs in being at Microsoft, right? Yeah. Through the years. Yeah, so some folks might know me of uh, I don't know, when I was still here in the Netherlands, yeah. working for DP and do some evangelism. SharePoint and all that stuff and Windows Phone. Yeah. I moved to Redmond six and a half years ago. Six and a half years already. Developer marketing for Windows, Windows Phone that was short and then Windows. Yeah. Worked on enterprise development and engineering and I moved to Azure Identity uh, like that, 10, 10 months ago. Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, your talks, your talk yesterday was it crowded? A lot of. Yeah, it was a full room. It was a kind of nice to see, right? Nice. I always like the, the security uh, identity thing for developers. Most don't really like it. I always make this joke like uh, it's uh, security for developers like spinach. Yeah. You know, it's good for you, but nobody really <laughs> likes it. But it's also a great area for some folks, you know? Uh, sure, some, some folks really enjoy it and they go in depth. Uh, most folks just want to get past it, right? Just make this login thing work and yeah. I'm done with it, which is fine, right? I just want to be compliant. It's yeah. infrastructure, <laughs> yeah. right? So it's just yeah. these two work because you can't, you can't do without it, but yeah. it's not their main interest. They want to just build whatever application they have to build. So, and that's, and that's okay. You don't need to be a security expert uh, to do this stuff. You have to be aware of it, it's, it's there, and that you actually Definitely. have to play in this world, right? So. Definitely. Yeah. So, and, and is it easy to start using it? It did, is did, easy to start it using to... it. It's also very easy to do it wrong. Uh, and, uh, so uh, the, the biggest difference between people have been building this login and password submit thing forever. Yeah. Actually, you are the man in the middle because your application at the time is aware of the login and password. Yeah. Passwords are evil. Yeah. You have to get rid of them one day. Uh, uh, MFA is now well, helping you to get more secure. Mm -hmm. So we talk about how the change from login and password thing is now going to tokens. Yeah. So if you talk about OAuth 2, OIDC, those are the protocols uh, where we build upon. Developers mostly have to understand, okay, oh, wait a minute. So when I connect with Azure Active Directory or B2C, uh, um, this little dance between the user and the, uh, the IDP, we call it, uh, uh, happens. Log in a password, MFA, and you know, Tuesday we're going to call your mom, it's okay to log in, all that kind of, all that kind of stuff. In the end, you happen to get a ID token. Yeah. So that's the one you have to validate. That's not that hard to do. Ace Metal that middleware does it for you, you hook it up, and you just do the authorized thing above your controllers with the tags. Mm -hmm. That's the simplest thing you can do, but then you want to uh, call protected APIs as well. You need access tokens for that. So yeah. the, the concept is not that hard, but people struggle with the different kind of tokens. Can I just pass along my identity token and to the APIs? No, that's not to take. secure. And the thing is, you will get it to work, yeah. but you might need to, you might not have the most secure implementation. Okay. But that's that's I guess the the thing we have to fix. So what I like about uh, Azure, when you have your app serving Azure functions, because no, I want to protect those. We call it Easy all. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Actually, that's fine. 
flying checkbox done. Oh, yeah, I saw the, those. It's just the toggle on, I'm done. And it's secure and it really works. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah we have to be uh, better in that list because the list is kind of uh, limited about different accounts you support. Yeah. So hopefully uh, we can fix that. And so we don't, I don't want AD, I want people to be able to log in with, I don't know, their, their, their social accounts or maybe another directory somewhere. So that's something we are doing. Yeah. To, to it needs to be that simple. A little insight in your kitchen. Is that something you're just imagining or are you already working on it in Microsoft? Well, I'm, I, I'm no, not no, you I try to do as little as possible. I right? agree, so, but yeah. is Microsoft working on it? Of course. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. We're trying to make the life of the developer easier so they are more secure. And that's part of my job as well, right? Help understand what developers are doing. I'm the, see, I'm the developer voice of the org yeah. uh, with my team, uh, uh, but also back to the organization. So whenever I have a conversation with you guys, some other folks around here, like, oh, I'm trying to do this, or this is things I'm running into, yeah. we bring that back as feedback. Well, this is what the developers actually are struggling with. Or, by the way, they're building these and these kind of scenarios. They can't or they can. Uh, just, so this works really well. Don't screw it up. Yeah. Uh, but also, yeah, we have some challenges here which we have to make uh, easier. What can we as a community do to actually help you in your job? To yeah, so... Uh, I, don't, I know the developers don't really care about this, but just tell everybody to switch on MFA. Don't just trust passwords. Password complexity rules is just bollocks. It doesn't, doesn't help you at all. Yeah. Because people use the same complex password everywhere. Yeah. They get reached. Not, not, the, not the Facebook, Google, or the Microsoft ones, right? It's this little flower shop around the corner, and you're going to use the same password. That one gets reached. People replay the password to get in. Yeah. Switch on MFA. I know it's not perfect, and it might be a hassle. You see authenticate app instead of just typing SMS codes, whatever, but switch on MFA. That's the first MFA thing. MFA meaning, just for the folks out there? Oh, multi-factor authentication. Just don't rely on logging and passwords. Yeah. Make sure we get an extra factor, and there's different ways to do it. But, and, and don't argue about is SMS can be hacked, blah, blah, blah. Does it matter? It's still way more secure than just logging It's an extra password. barrier yeah. to... Extra. Yeah. Yeah. And extra I guess step. the next one is um, um, if your organization, and a lot of organizations already have, like Office 365, you have Azure Active Directory. Make sure every application you have integrates in that world because login and password will go away people will start using uh, uh, passwordless FIDO2 that's the big next thing people actually care about and organizations care about you have to play along in this in this new world it yeah. uh, gives you user signals and on which is a security feature again if you pop up a login and password dialogue all the time you train your users to, to, to fill in a login and a password yeah. and they will fill it in everywhere whenever some pop up comes up even for apps which are not yours so and not Play secure. along in this new modern world. Uh, choose a directory. Oh, uh, please stop storing your own uh, login and password, hash passwords in your own database. Yeah. Uh, I know we all think we can do a great job in that, but you're not protecting your identities. You don't know if people are trying to brute force or password spray or whatever attack nowadays happens on your database. Use an IDP. Well, nice. hopefully the ones of Microsoft, but if not somebody else's, don't don't screw around with your passwords anymore. Don't look at the screen. Now, just saw this. Uh, yeah, we, uh, apparently, there's a follower. We have a new follower. Oh, thank yeah. you, follower. Uh, follow it's a bit late. Yay! Nice. <laughs> well, nice. It's uh, Dutch, Dutch Dev Dude. Dutch Dev Dude. Dutch, yeah. Dutch Dev Dude. Just uh, want to give a shout out. Um, if you look at the future of security and the future of authentication, uh, what is your view on where it's, where it's heading towards? You know, you mentioned pass, password lists. Yeah. Is anything beyond that? Well, so many companies still have to do like MFA first and then we'll pass what this will be. I think uh, uh, from a developer perspective, this really matter. If you play along in this new world and on the right way to connect it, they can come up with whatever they have to do. You don't worry, you have to don't worry. You should just the SDKs and all that stuff is done for you, right? If you write the code correctly now, log in a password, passwordless, uh, MFA, it's all supported without any single line of code change. So just play along in this new world and let the administrators and all those guys figure out what kind of crazy thing they want to do next which is more secure you as a developer should be able to, to just play along in the world there will be more things and I know the distributed identities is an important piece for most organizations it's not relevant uh, proof of possession that's another thing uh, people care about we can make it more secure yeah. people can't steal tokens and, and play them around. so there, there will be uh, incremental incremental innovations in, in this regard yeah. uh, 
them, stick with the SDKs mm. and the IDPs because they will support the standards. You as a developer don't want to be able to uh, read up on all the email lists and all that kind of stuff to make sure you got the latest, the greatest one, how to implement a certain flow and security thing. Just use the SDKs and it's all done for you because you're not going to sign up for that and, and pretend you're going to be secure uh, for the rest of that project because you don't care about that stuff. You want to just build your logic. Yeah. Let other folks care about that stuff and there are plenty of them and just use their knowledge. That's what I would recommend. Whatever is new. And is that also in your session later on today? Or are you focusing on something else? You will. You've heard a few of them now, but like a few of those best practices that uh, use SDKs and middleware for all that stuff because the protocols are by itself not secure. The implementation of those are what makes it secure. Yeah. And that's what we do with our endpoints and SDKs. So that's an easy one. Okay, don't right. screw around with access tokens if you're yeah. not supposed to read them. There's another one. There's a few of those. So yeah, don't put sensitive there. data in your JWT tokens. No. Don't. <laughs> that's, an, uh, that's a matter of debate as well, right? So. I was gonna, how many claims can I put in a token? 52. <laughs> really? No, it doesn't matter. I would, I would make them small, but you can have religious discussions about how much information you put in there. So I, I don't... I don't care. So if, you, if, you write, if you're using the right patterns, I'm more than happy to have that nice discussion about claims in tokens because that means that people are on the right track. So. Yeah. And they're thinking about it. Exactly. Yeah, so, definitely. Oh, it's interesting because um, I uh, read up on a use case of uh, JWT tokens not only being used for authentication, but it's also being used for like verification of anything. Like if you have a structure or, or, or data structure, you want to verify that this, that this data structure has not been tampered with. It's not authentic. It's verification more, right? So that's uh, that's yeah. So too. JSON web tokens, job tokens, no, JSON web tokens, tokens. Gift, GIF. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are uh, uh, just an, uh, a format, right? So for identity tokens, the, the standard YDC actually said, well, this is the, the token format you should use. Yeah. For access tokens, that's not something we use them because we don't want to do extra round trips to the server uh, to figure out what the access tokens are. We have so many. We do like 45 billion uh, authorization authentication a day. <laughs> so if you start calling APIs and they have to do a round trip to figure out what the access tokens is about. That's an uh, extra Ooh. load we have to uh, to carry. And and since we are uh, uh, having so many users, that's uh, that's actually a really costly exercise. So yeah. our access tokens are actually jobs too. Uh, um, there's now a draft for standard uh, to make it an official standard. But at the moment, there's no standard for access tokens. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Azure Active Directory only does um, you know, application and user authentication, right? Is there any plans to do physical access, to, to manage physical access? So given your employee and you need to go to a certain floor on a, on, a, on a building and I've got an access card, will it be possible to yeah, well, yeah, integrate yeah, that? Yeah, we have actually built that on top of it. So oh. you want to, your, your access card is like the identifier. You know, it's okay, or maybe uh, we have companies where they're using face recognition in combination with. That's a different layer. And then depending on what time, blah, blah. So it's never, it's never an easy, and that they just build it on top of the uh, identity platform, make sure that they're uh, going to close. Is this person still employed, right? And is he allowed to yeah. uh, to be within the building? So they built their own authorization schemes around it. Yes. So is Very the nice. building then seen as a service principle or something, or no, no, no like an application? How, I'm, I'm so, trying to understand how. <laughs> yeah. So the. the <laughs> What's the service principle? Uh, yeah, oh. it's an enterprise app, it's an application object. Yeah, we get those questions a lot. So, no, this, it's, it's confusing, I understand. So, it depends. The application, every application uh, in, uh, who wants to interact with a uh, identity provider like Azure Active Directory has to be registered. It's just, we have to know about your application. Yeah. Uh, we call that an application object, the registration of the application. And everything is an application website, mobile client, your power shell script, all we have to be known about this thing. Yeah. Uh, but the administrator wants to be able to administrate our applications and policies, uh, security, and all that stuff. That's called a service principle or an enterprise app. All right. I don't know why. It's like, I guess we do it on purpose to confuse you. And <laughs> job security. <laughs> so look, I'm really smart. I understand what the difference are between an enterprise app and a service principle. That kind of the same. Yeah. Uh, so if you build a solution, uh, there's going to be a service principle. And if you build a multi-tenant solution like Office, you're going to have multiple service principles. So that's the one of those basic concepts in a, in a platform, how we 
implemented. So, um, if you would build this uh, kind of door access uh, uh, application, uh, it's probably a uh, service principle somewhere. Yeah. Uh, uh, at, at least one uh, to make sure it all works. Yes. Okay. Nice. Very nice. That's uh, security 101 by. Uh, wow. Uh, can by I, yes. It is, yes, right? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> this, was, this was this was way too serious, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you guys can, started liking <laughs> uh, Spanish wow. suddenly, right? Can, can we can we ask more uh, complicated questions like C sharp? What's the name come from C sharp? Explain. Yeah, why is it not called C hash? Yeah, C hash. I always call it C hash. What's the problem with it? C That's C sharp. Come C, on. C hekje. C C C hekje. Is it, it's well, it's like Jeff 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 guys. I just I did some security stuff. So <laughs> why is C sharp not called C hash? It, it doesn't sound right at all. Well, I'm biased because I already <laughs> did a discussion in the speaker room, so I think I'm going to put you on the spot, right? Me? Yeah, yeah you're the experts. Okay. Well, just I would say just uh, go with the flow and see hash. Because everybody says C, <laughs> C no. sharp nowadays. It's C sharp. It's C sharp. So but what, why? what we found why? out, at so well, it says C++ with another two pluses, so that makes like a little hash. But uh, apparently it comes from the music uh, thing, so the C sharp is like a higher Higher. tone. Okay. Okay. It was like one of those questions, like, that's actually a frustrating good question, but I have no answer. So, yeah. I like like uh, the discussions we have today with some of the uh, American colleagues here, like what's the difference between fries and patat? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, fries in, in, and chips. in, the, US, in the USA <laughs> are usually a lot of thinner. And uh, patat in, in the Dutch here, we used to make it a lot thicker. And in Belgium, fries even wider and thicker. Mm, so that's the best. That's the difference. That's the best. I agree. Those that's are the best. best. But what do you think are the best? Are, do you like fries or do you like patat? Yeah, for me it's all the same. So all the same. Yeah, farmers fries, uh, patat friet. You got that one as well in the Netherlands. It's kind of confusing. <laughs> yeah, but, but you must miss the peanut butter sauce in the US, right? Oh, well, we have it. Ah, Dude, you have no here. clue how much peanut butter there is in the US. They put it on everything. <laughs> peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter. I thought the Dutch whatever. put like, peanut butter on everything. I can't believe it. Just like they are crazy about peanut butter. They put it in anything. So, yeah, okay. disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. I like it, but okay. That's personal preference, I think. Okay. Well, if you don't have any, I don't have anything else. Thank you very much for uh, yeah, spending some time. Thank you so much, and uh, nice to see you back in uh, in Holland for a while. I'll be back in two weeks again. So. <laughs> back in two weeks again. Well, thank you so much for your time, and uh, enjoy the rest of Tech Techorama and uh, your session later today, of thank course. You so much. It was a pleasure. Thank you.